Oh, okay. mm. yeah. Not going to do this standing up. Oh, not in my current condition. <laughs> How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. This video is going to be a little bit different than the normal vlogs in the sense that we're not going to be doing a whole bunch of running around or anything too specific in regards to my van life. Well, I mean, it still has to do with my van life, but more specifically, it's just going to be a little bit more laid back talking to you guys about the EcoFlow Wave 2 air conditioning unit slash heater unit. If you watch all my videos, you know that not too long ago I did a, my first initial video on this product. It was a review of the product, but it included the unboxing and familiarizing myself with it, getting it set up and uh, going through some of the features. And I thought it's probably a good idea to now do a follow-up video now that I've actually lived with the product for an extended period of time and I've familiarized myself even more with it. I've used it on a day-to-day -day basis um, and it gives me the opportunity to talk about a couple or a few features uh, that I didn't even really mention in that initial video. If you didn't see that video, it's a little bit more in line with my typical vlog style. You can check it out right here. But for this one, yeah, we're just going to talk about this in, in general. And if you're not really into product reviews and you're still watching right now, well, maybe watch the bottom left corner of your screen. You might see a sneak peek of the kitty cats every once in a while. But uh, remember to subscribe, hit that like button, leave a comment. All that stuff leaves this all that stuff leaves this. We're off to a rollicking start. All that stuff really helps the channel out and I greatly appreciate it. So right off the top, let's talk about using this unit day to day and if it is worth it or not. Now that's gonna be subjective, whether it's worth it or not, because everybody values money differently. This is not a cheap piece of equipment. You definitely get what you pay for. They call it a portable air conditioner. <laughs> yes, it's it's far more portable than those like stand-up units that you would hose into like your screen door that I used to use when I lived in sticks and bricks. It's far more portable than that, but it's still not light. When I hear portable, I hear ease and it can be argued that this is easier than something larger to move around, but it's still heavy and that kind of goes hand in hand with what you're getting really good build quality comes at, a, at the price of well your wallet and uh and and heft but what it lacks in i guess affordability again i do really believe that's subjective and lightness <laughs> it more than makes up for in what it does and it cools small spaces down very well that being said like i talked about that in my first video what i didn't really touch on was the heating function it's got three modes right air conditioner heater and then fan we'll kind of talk about all of those a little bit but we'll start with the heating function if you watched my last vlog you saw me actually put that function to use when i was in sort of a tight situation and i needed to dry a specific area of my van and it worked like a hot darn it <laughs> uh, that is to say it worked very well it puts out a great amount of heat i would say the heat is on par to the cooling that the air conditioning function does which I guess is what you would expect it to do so that is a good thing I also found that it just in general for heating the space when I was living through a couple cool nights in the last couple weeks it did really well it's not that noisy it's tolerable I mean if you live in a van you're already and you have a diesel heater you're kind of already gotten used to like fan noise blowing air noise and the tick 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 of the fuel pump this isn't any worse than that it's almost a little bit more peaceful because it's a little bit more consistent yes I know the ticking of a fuel pump can be consistent but it does change and this is just straight through um, warms up the space and it, it, it cuts through that chill really nicely I, I was surprised I thought for sure it wasn't going to sort of work for me I thought it might put out a little bit of heat and I'd be oh that's okay but then the battery would die and I'd be right back to being cold but no it did a, it did a great job and I was pleasantly surprised with that and air conditioning modes you do have to vent it out right so that it comes with the hoses uh, I'm not going to pull them out now again I, I showed all of that in the first video but there is a hose attachment for on top and there's a hose attachment for the rear and everything comes out on the top here and these hoses ideally are supposed to be vented outside the vehicle i've only ever vented the one again if you watch my videos you saw how i had it attached to my ceiling fan and i had it going out that way the rear of the unit is what pulls air in and now i did have a subscriber very kindly try to explain why it is important that that rear air that's coming in also comes from the outside but i couldn't wrap my tiny little brain around it and um, i found that the unit worked just fine uh, without venting the rear to the outside if that makes sense now he was trying to explain to me that it would be more efficient and it wouldn't use as much power 
um, if it if I had set it up properly, but I don't have the ability to do that on my van right now. I'm not interested in making a project out of more and making more holes in Lucky. My ceiling fan works perfectly. I did use the unit without venting it at all, and that's ill-advised. You're definitely, you're not, you're seeing, I don't even want to say diminishing returns, but it's not being efficient at all. It's because this will all, like if you're using air conditioner, this is going to blow out extremely hot air. Conversely, if you're heating, it's going to blow out extremely cold air. And in a small space, it, that all just gets recirculated. And what you end up with is sort of uh, medium muggy. You're not creating any sort of comfort one way or the other. So definitely vent the top out. That is a big thing for sure. And like I said, I find that it works just fine going right out my ceiling vent. But still focusing on what it's like to live with this thing on the daily. Talked about how heavy it is. I found a spot in my van where it can just kind of plant itself. That would be the ideal situation. You don't want to be moving it around too much. If you're somebody that's in a little bit more of a weekend warrior or a camping situation, then be prepared to heft it around a little bit more. But in the van, uh, just find a place for it, leave it there. The thing that I need to point out the most is I talk about how heavy it is. That's because I have it attached to this battery. Now the battery is sold separately. You have to get that separately. Yikes. And that adds a considerable amount of weight to it. Now it is nice in the sense that then you don't have to worry about finding a plug-in or anything like that, but the battery itself is exactly that. It's a battery. And as I mentioned in my first video, battery technology needs to make a great advancement before I will be thoroughly impressed with what they can do. Now, that being said, on eco mode, because this thing can run on max, normal, and eco-friendly mode. Eco-friendly mode is going to give you the most bang for your buck when using the battery. And I found that on average, you're getting between six and seven hours in eco mode, whether you're air conditioning or heating. You run it on max mode on the battery, you'll be lucky to squeeze out two, two and a half hours. So it kind of depends on your usage, right? That's going to be open to whatever your situation might be, whether or not you need the battery. In my opinion, I think the easiest go-to route with this unit is to forego the battery and plug it into like proper power. Now, whether that is like a shoreline and you're plugged into like a house power outlet, or if you're plugged into something like the Delta II Max or any other solar generator power station that can power this thing, on max, it's pulling just under 800 watts. So if you're going to use a power station, keep that in mind. It doesn't really matter so much because even if you just got like an 800 watt power station, you're probably only going to be able to run this thing for a couple hours. You're going to want to go to something bigger. Like I said, this unit ain't messing around, but when it comes to wanting to cool your home down when it's really, 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 really hot, this is a game changer for sure. But again, if you are somebody who wants that battery, in that case, the way I sort of play that scenario out in my head is that you're gonna wanna use it to maybe cool down your space in the evening when it's still quite hot or muggy or chilly, I suppose, and you want it fully charged, ready to go. And the reason I sort of mentioned that is because as I showed in one of my camping vlogs, the ports on the side of this thing, where you plug it in right down here, this is the battery connection. This thing just comes right off. It can unplug from the battery and the unit itself. Then you got your wall power. You also got a solar port here. So if you have solar panels, you can plug into there. The unit will not run on anything except the fan mode when you are only connected to solar panels, right? It just doesn't have, it's not, connect, it's not getting enough of an oomph to switch over to air conditioning or heating. But that might work pretty well for somebody who just wants to be off grid, but isn't gonna be in their small space throughout the majority of the day. That maybe they're going out on the lake or they're gonna go for a hike or something. They could set the solar panels up to charge the battery because the unit will suck solar through that port and send it to the battery and charge that up throughout the course of the day so that when you come back in the evening, you'll have a fully topped up battery. I didn't even talk about that in my first video because it didn't even cross my mind. And I was pleasantly surprised when I discovered that that's the way that that function will work the absolute best. All right, one more thing I didn't talk about in that first video that I have been pleasantly surprised with is the app that you can download from the App Store or the Google Play Store or wherever else you might get your apps these days, I don't know. But it's the EcoFlow app and it connects very seamlessly through Bluetooth to this and any other uh, EcoFlow product as far as I know. And I'm gonna throw this up on the screen here so you can kind of see just how awesome it is. There we go. So this is the interface, right? We've got the uh, unit there in the center of the screen and you can see that it's in standby mode. Now, if the unit is powered completely off, this won't connect. You will have to physically turn the unit on up top. No problem. But this is great because I love remote controls, but I've already got too many of them when it comes to my lights in Lucky. So the last thing I needed was another separate remote control for this thing. Absolutely not. I've always got my phone with me. Pick that up if it's cold in the middle of the night or if I'm hot in the middle of the night, I can power it on just by tapping the on button. 
you can hear that the unit turns on. And then I'm actually, I'm in fan mode here at the bottom right corner of that. You can see I'm in fan mode. We can turn it on to cool by just tapping cool and it's gonna change the whole dynamic that is so cool. And then this, this slider, you can change exactly what you want the temperature to be, right? Just wherever, I mean, for me, when I'm on air conditioner, I don't know about you, but I always set it the absolute lowest. I need to cool down now. You can turn the fan speed up just by tapping, right? Switch everything, super easy. It shows you the temperature at the exhaust port, I guess. No, I guess the exhaust port would be up top. This is the, uh, we're gonna call this the Coolia, the F down port. Hello. Uh, again, you can switch over to heat, no problem. It, dynamically, it changes right here on the app and shows us everything. And you can go into settings up here in the top corner and you can rename it. I've actually named this Lucky's Wave 2. I better turn that heater off before I really regret everything. We'll put it back on fan mode here. All right, and we'll go back into settings. You can change your what the temperature is showed in, whether you're a normal person and it's in Celsius, or if you're a weirdo and it's in Fahrenheit, that's fine. Just kidding. A um, whole bunch of different settings for you to play around with here. I think this was great. And then these, these firmware updates, they're very good. EcoFlow is very good at keeping everything up to date. When there's bugs and whatnot, they'll release it and it takes a matter of seconds to update. Unless, of course, it's a huge update. That's pretty par for the course. Uh, you can turn that beep on and off, which is cool. But anyways, lots of stuff to play around with in here. One thing you'll see here is this drain mode. And this is the last thing that we'll talk about because I had some people ask me, well, how does the unit drain? Because like any air conditioner, it will build up condensation. I'm not 100% sure. I haven't looked too much into this. This drain function you can turn on and off at will. It says drain free below this. It says the device is equipped with a self evaporative and drain free system for cooling mode, which eliminates the need for outward, dr outward drainage in non high humidity environments. All right, and then it also has another thing on it says external drainage. Once a hose is connected to the water outlet, the device will automatically discharge water. So we're gonna leave this run for now and I'm gonna put this down, we're gonna stop that. And it does come with this drain hose, right? It, I don't know, I was monkeying around with this forever. On the back of the unit here, let's see how much you can actually see. So here in the corner here, right? It's got this little plug, I can pull it out. And I did this once and yes, some water absolutely came out. Super simple. It's supposed to be able to, you're supposed to be able to leave this in and just attach this hose as far as I know, like this. And then you could tell it to drain and it, I guess it would. I haven't used it enough. So I'll be, I guess, I, I guess I haven't used it enough to build up a, a considerable amount of condensation. Although it did say maybe there's some weird space age technology in here that's just returning that moisture to the air, the little that I am generating. It says it was evaporative. Evaporative to me means back into the air. But if need be, you can just pull this plug right out. I did do this once and you just take the unit, you can just tip it backwards and it will drain. But unfortunately, very anticlimactic for the purposes of this video, nothing coming out. So that is there and it is easy, but unfortunately I can't comment on it because I guess what they're saying is working very well. We're outside. Stop air conditioning the outside world. This is ridiculous. So to sort of wrap this up here, um, when it comes to this unit, I stand by the fact that it is an absolute game changer. Yeah, it comes with a lot of caveats. You got to be prepared to sort of adjust things in your van. If, if your van is like mine and it's fully built and you kind of have to work around adding new things like this. But I'm very thankful for EcoFlow to reaching out to me and asking me to review this product because I live in a province in Canada where during the summer months of July and August, I understand we're not there yet, so maybe it won't be good, but I don't see that being the case because I've experienced it on what have been pretty hot days already and it cools down the van very nicely. And if I happen to be at a campground with power during the height of those summer months, I'm gonna be laughing when it comes to this thing because I can just leave it run all day and I can go inside my van when I get overheated, which happens a lot because as I mentioned a lot recently, I run hot. And this thing is just, it's, it's basically a godsend. Now there's other options out there for sure. People are gonna find out other ways to do things, but this is just such an easy all-in-one package. The ease of the app makes things super convenient to control. And as long as you don't mind sort of hoofing this thing around. Like I said, if you don't need the battery, it's actually a heck of a lot lighter. And that is my go-to way to do this. Once I do start camping and it is those really hot months, this battery is gonna come off, it's gonna go into storage and uh, I'm just gonna have the unit in the van and no muss, no fuss, cool down the air, 
what more can I really ask for? If you have any questions about the unit, ask them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer. If you'd like to pick yourself up one of these units, there is a whole bunch of information in the description of this video. You can probably snag yourself a little bit of a discount. And uh, obviously that would help me out as well. But again, I'm just trying to get you guys as much information about this stuff as I possibly can. I'm gonna leave this here. I will continue to use this throughout the summer months and possibly do a third follow-up maybe a little bit more brief of what it was like on very hot days. Although, like I asked at the top, please subscribe to the channel and I will feature this in my daily vlogs as I do my van life. I do suggest not putting your arm right up on top when you're talking to your phone because your arm lands right on the power button. Unbelievable. That is it for my thoughts on the EcoFlow Wave 2. I guess one other thing I should mention here right before I sign off um, is that when I did connect it to the Delta 2 Max, which is the huge beefy new power station from EcoFlow as well, it's like, it's like peanut butter and jelly, man. This thing on eco mode plugged into that thing could run for something close to like 40 hours and I was quite impressed with that. So if you're looking to invest in a system that is potentially an all-in-one, now the one thing I can't speak to is the winter months and the heater, right? But I love my diesel heater. We will see what happens in the winter. That's so far off. I can't really comment on it now. It definitely took that chilly edge off a few weeks ago when we did get down very close to zero. Well, not zero, like five degrees. But if you are looking for an all-in-one system and you want to invest a huge chunk of money, it sort of comes down to buy once, cry once. You might want to invest in the whole all-in-one system that is the Wave 2 and the Delta 2 Max and not really worry about it. All right, you guys, I'm going to leave this one here. Until the next one, just go out there, be happy, be creative, be yourselves. Most importantly, be positive, and I will see you all in the next one.